Welcome to History Bites, I'm Rick Green. If you think of the opening of the American West, it's hard not to think of cavalry, cowboys, railways, and ranchers. If you think of the Canadian West, it's hard not to think of the Bay. Yep, America was settled by people looking for free land. Canada was opened up by men sniffing out rodent fur. The Hudson Bay Company started out with a few plucky entrepreneurs, and it grew to 10 times the size of the Roman Empire, the longest running commercial enterprise in history and all thanks to a couple of Frenchmen working for some Englishmen. Another fine Canadian tradition. Here then is the story of two incredible men who built an empire and watched everyone else get rich. If that isn't television, I don't know what is. Tonight on 2020, it's the driving force behind a whole new economy. Beaver and bee commerce. Soft beaver food woven into headwear. Who are the young visionaries who are making a fortune in software? My wife doesn't have to know. Good evening. I'm Barbara Waters in London. And I'm Hugh Downs in Paris. Good night. I don't go anywhere without my beaver. They are the height of fashion, the epitome of luxury, the holy grail of hats. From the streets of Paris to the luxurious wains of London, beaver is in. And with European beavers long hunted into extinction, there's a huge demand for fresh fur. The beaver hats are so soft, and they last forever. If you don't have one, I mean, just forget it. I mean, forget it. They're like your total identity. You can tell a person's class or the kind of hat they wear. It's like a beaver badge. England has become the world's biggest beaver baron. Ironically, under the guidance of two Frenchmen. Two Gauls with Gaul. How did two foreigners, Frenchmen no less, become the weeding whites in Britain's beaver bonanza? Well, you know, normally I would hate you English, but at this point, I hate that French even more. Well, we risk our life, we bring back the beaver pelts worth thousands of dollars. Government of Montreal, he confiscates our pelts, takes all our profits, fine us for hunting without a license. Two years to gather those beavers, for what? Up until now, everyone has thought of the Americas as an inconvenience, a roadblock between us and the riches of the Orient. I know. Everyone thinks of it as a place to go around, uh, to avoid. But you know, it has so much to offer, like uh, beaver and uh, God. What about farmland? No, no, too many mosquitoes, uh, too many black flies, uh, too many trees. And now the British Business News. Live from Garraway's Coffee House, number three exchange alley, Cornhill. Good afternoon. I'm Irene Lockjaw with today's business news. The latest figures at the fur trading market are about to be unveiled here as the figures for this year's beaver pelt harvest arrives in England. And it promises to be another record breaking year with supply unable to meet demand. At this hour on the exchange, the bidding for furs is being carried about in the traditional manner by candle and it appears as if the trading is almost done. And it's too noisy to hear a pin drop, but drop it has. And the bidding is closed on another batch of beaver fur. We'll have the latest figures on the next shipload of furs as soon as the next candle is lit. London, 1665, a city racked by bubonic plague, a hundred thousand die. London, one year later, a huge fire raging out of control for five days, 13,000 homes destroyed. London today, no longer on fire, not even hot to the touch, 
and totally plague-free. This year, visit London. Hurry before another disaster hits this place. You were badly treated by your own government. So you spent several years here in London organizing your expedition. Now you're off to the new world. Are you going to miss the luxury of London? Well, you're not really, no, no. We get there a few years ago. City was in the middle of an outbreak of the bonnet plague, eh? so uh, it was kind of a smelly and full of f death and suffering. And uh, then the next f year, the f city burned the f around, eh? great big f fire. So now you've got the backing to go after the beavers. Uh, yeah, King Charles II, eh? he's given us some land uh, to our backers, uh, Prince Rupert and the others. The biggest land grant in history. Yeah, well, beavers then eat space. Do you think? Anyone will object? Will anyone question the right of King Charles to simply give you all that land? Well, I'm sure the French and Dutch may object, but what can they do? I was thinking the natives who live on that land might object. Oh, just because you live on some land for a few thousand years doesn't make it yours. Radisson and Grossier weren't the only colorful characters involved in the Hudson Bay story. The money guys were just as interesting, starting with Prince Rupert he managed to convince the King of England to hand over a piece of land larger than Europe. It's the Prince Rupert Show, starring Prince Rupert! Hello, and welcome to the Prince Rupert Show! I'm Prince Rupert of the Rhine, and on today's show, I'll be showing you how to train your dogs to do tricks. And then it's outside for some lessons in leading cavalry charges and defeating enemies in battle. I will show you some of the tricks that made me the most feared warrior in the English Civil War. <laughs> and then we're gonna go down to the lake where I'm going to show you my new torpedo. And then over to my ironworks and forge to look at the new type of pistol I've invented with a machine gun I'm working on. <laughs> down they go off. <laughs> then it's back outside to be hawking with our trained birds and then down to the river to test out my underwater ship, the diving engine, which I'm going to use to retrieve treasure from sunken ships. And later, I will show you how to spend that treasure on new paint and easel so you can paint like I do. And I'll show you my new way of drawing buildings in perspective. And then we will come back outdoors for a frank discussion on how to please a woman. Eh? Ooh, wow. I'll share the techniques that have brought me love and warmth and who knows how many bastard children. Eh? <laughs> he tells Barbara that as a teenager he was so captured by the Iroquois but managed to escape. Iroquois. Uh, the guy who escaped with me, a Huron guy, was so anxious to get back with his people, he insisted we travel by day. And a huge Iroquois raiding party caught us. Yeah. I bet your Indian friend's face was red. Yeah, especially after they cut it off and stuck it on a pole. They cut off his head? Well, he was dying from all the bullets they'd shot in him, you know. He was so far gone. So they were showing him mercy? No, no, it was just too far gone to torture. So anyway, after they stripped me naked and tied me to a post for the night, uh, well, you can picture it. Yes, yes I can. What did the Prince Archbishop of Munster recently do for 7,000 of his subjects? Baptize them, forgive them, marry them, or sell them off to be soldiers? Okay, I know this one. I, I heard about it from a cousin who travels. It's D, he sold them off to be soldiers. Final answer. And you're correct. Very good. It's back up to the forge to develop a new ally called Prince's Metal after me. And then over to my glass blowing oven to see a new process I call Rupert's Drops that might well lead to bulletproof glass. Oh. And then we're going to go down to the basement where I'm going to show you some survival tricks I learned while I was in prison in Austria. And then over to the river again where I will show you how to build ships in the Dutch way. Come on. Because when they got me back to the village, they were going to make me run the gauntlet. What's that? It's a European tradition. Prisoners have to run between a line of men and women and children, and they just kind of uh, hammer you with sticks and stuff. If you make it to the end, you're lucky and kind of pulpy. So they dragged me from the chief's tent, tied me to a stake, tore off all my fingernails, and threw burning torches at my feet. Oh, yeah. And one brave pinned my left foot to the ground with a red hot sword. That was weird. I mean, I was already tied to a post, just foo, 
right through. And finally, how to make a fortune in real estate and beaver. Now, I've convinced the king to give me a huge chunk of land for almost nothing, and I'm telling you, you can too. <laughs> oh, okay, I guess that's all the time we have for today. So I see you next week on the Prince Rupert Show. <laughs> that's me, bye-bye. When we return, the fur hits the fan. In high school, I learned about Radisson and Grossier, or as we called them, radishes and gooseberries, and the trade in beaver pelts for beaver hats. Now, I had trouble imagining fashion-conscious Europeans demanding hats like this. Oh, darling, you look absolutely stunning. Well, it turns out the popular beaver hats were about as close to beavers as silk shirts are to leaf-eating worms. Painful, but worth it. Now I'd like to talk about hats, and not just any hats, beavers. Beavers come in all shapes and sizes, and they're fun to make. The felt made from beaver fur is waterproof and lasts forever. Now, you can just buy your beaver hat, but I prefer to make my own. That means starting with some beavers. You can buy them at the market, but I prefer to sail over to the New World and either trap my own or barter with the Indians. I think trapping your own makes it that much more personal. For 4,000, who is not at war? The British and the Portuguese against the Spanish, the Dutch and French against the British, the Dutch against the British, or the French against the British. Oh boy, what week is it? <laughs> <laughs> but all you do is stand for hours over a hole in the ice, waiting for the beaver to pop his head up so you can impale him. I know you don't think bear baiting is a real sport. No way, no way, okay, this really gets me, eh? Mm -hmm. Come on, you got a bear tied up to a tree or whatever, eh? And then you let 20 or 30 dogs attack it and tear it up? Come on, that ain't no sport. First of all, because there's no athletes involved, eh? Now, when you have a beaver, the first step is to cut him open and remove the guts. It ain't a sport, seeing dogs and bears tearing each other up with fur and blood flying everywhere. Come on, that ain't a sport. That's just fun. And feed it to the dogs. Well, wasn't that interesting? I could have sworn that beaver was stone cold dead. Now, the fur we want is the, not the long bristly fur, but the fine under fur. This fur has fine barbs on it that hook together and make such strong, durable felt. Be careful, beaver fur is valuable and you want to save every scrap. I'm pretty sure it's not C, the trapezoid. That I'm pretty sure is a disease. Could be D, monks like to sing. I'd like to call a friend. All right, we could do that. Who would you like to call? The Archbishop of Paris. One woman approached me with her son, and uh, he had a little knife, uh, the kind you use to cut rope. Uh, and guess what mom had the boy do? Um, cut your ropes and set you free? <laughs> I wish! <laughs> no, she told him to cut off this finger. <laughs> As you can see, the kid wasn't strong enough. You know his heart was in it, but he just didn't have the strength. Kids, eh? Another old guy tried to cut off my thumb, but by this time, the rest of the Iroquois were so impressed by my bravery, or at least my ability to not die, they figured, hey, we want this guy on our team. And a year later, when I could walk again, I managed to escape. I told them I was going hunting, and uh, I didn't come back. I felt bad about lying to them after they'd done so much for me, what with the not cutting off my head and stuff. That was so nice. Darn. I said I wasn't going to cry. Astonishing. The tough thing about harvesting beavers is that you can't just herd them all together on your beaver farm. You gotta go where the beavers are. Damn. So most trappers were working thousands of miles from home with no law or justice system. They were free to do pretty much whatever they wanted. Unfortunately, the land already belonged to the natives. That led to trouble.
Are you stuck in a low-paying job with no chance of advancement? Well, now you can become a Caesar. That's right, a Caesar of the wilderness. Join the company of adventurers. Travel across the sea. Live a dream. No soldiers, no missionaries, no rules. Set your own hours. Hunt your own food. Be your own companion. Sign on with the company of adventurers for a five-year hitch, and you'll never look back and probably never come back. Reminds me, it's time to do my legs. Uh, how, Chief? Oh. How are you? Pleasurable. What's your question, running with scissors? Um, yeah, see, I got these guys coming around to my tent all the time. Mm -hmm. And, Chief, I gotta tell you, they're, they're getting on my nerves. Like, they show up in their black skirts, dressed like women, but they're men. They're, they're white guys. Weird stuff. Yeah, and then they start tapping on my teepee, wanting to talk to me about their god. And then they're trying to give me some literature to read, you know, some uh, Bible or something. And I'm like, look, man, not interested. Go talk to walks into trees, he'll listen to anybody, you know? Right, so these are missionaries you're dealing with here. Oh, uh, yeah. Jesuits probably, they're the worst. Oh, I know. They always show up at the worst times, like when my girlfriend's over or, or dinner. And then they just keep going on about this Satan guy controlling me and how I've got to repent because I live in sin and I don't even know where sin is. And these guys are mad at me for living there and I just- Burns I, you, huh? Oh, I get so mad sometimes, I just want to get out the tomahawk, you know, take a little oh, off no. the top. You don't you want know? to do that running with well, scissors. Well, I just- They'll just come back with more of their friends. Convicted criminals are pumping up their muscles in our penal system, bodybuilding to incredible strength. When they're released onto the streets, they pose a major problem for law enforcement officials. And yet, you continue to live with the Indians during the rest of your expeditions. Well, uh, not with the Iroquois, but uh, Huron and uh, Cree. Good people, uh, it's like everywhere. Some folks are great, uh, some folks torture. These native people are basically nomads? Yeah, uh, the North American lifestyle is really mobile homes and fast boats, uh, camping, barbecue, and so on. Uh, find a nice spot, uh, live there for a while, then move on. market has been shaken to its flat tail with the news of a major management shakeup at the Hudson Bay Company of Adventurers. Pierre Esprit Radisson and Medard Chouard, Sir de Grossier, the French woodsmen, are leaving the Hudson Bay Company. When we return, our pair of pioneers are out on their ears. The early Canadian explorers, Radisson and Grossier, established the network of trappers and outposts that became the Hudson Bay Company. Then they were pushed aside. Cheesed off, the dynamic duo went back to France to work for their own people. And they got screwed by them, too. Even in the 1700s, business was business, and our boys got the business. Radisson, the charming marketing expert, and Grossier, the management wizard, were instrumental in setting up all of the English fur trading posts in the Hudson Bay. For eight years, these two entrepreneurs have led Britain's search for fresh fur into Prince Rupert's land. Until today, when word came that they have defected to the competition, the Montreal-based Northwest Company. A spokesman for the Hudson Bay organization gave this statement earlier today. These two Frenchies thought that it would be best to go hunting for beaver, whereas I felt the better strategy was to let the Indians bring the beaver to us. So at this point, Messrs. Radisson and Grosset are going to be leaving us to pursue other opportunities. Now, there had long been concerns amongst our staff that these two Frenchies were merely biding their time, stealing vital facts about our operation to sell to the French, which now they have. Good thing for us, we've been slowly pushing them aside. All of this to a boil. This is the fur, the chemicals, and the mercury. Is the mercury boiling? Oh yes, you can always tell the mercury fumes. They have that peculiar, I don't know. Now, a professional hatter will check his mixture every few minutes, but I like to check it constantly, just to be sure. And it's mercury. Now, I know some professional hatters don't check it more than once or twice, but then you know what they say, mad as a hatter. I don't know why they say that. Head of the East India Company, the people who brought tea to England. <laughs> That's right, Irene. It was almost uh, 25 years ago, right here in Garraway's, the first tea served in England. And what a success it's been for us. 
I know you're in the hot beverage business, and Radisson and Grossier are in fur. Well, yes, it's, thought... it's different products, isn't it? But very much the same process. Importing something by sea to Britain and the continent, of course. Trade. Whether it's food or clothing or a damn fine cup of tea. Mm, mm. We're, we're dealing with essential products. Will the loss of two founding members affect the company of adventurers? Well, of course, in the short term, the loss of two brave, daring courier de bois <laughs> with their vast knowledge of the land, the beavers and the native people will cost the company. But let's not forget, they were French. So it was earlier, so I, I miss London all that much. Prices have been rising steadily throughout the day on the word that Radisson and Grosselier have left the company they built. I'm joined by John Dryden, author, poet, and social critic. Hello, Irene. Hello. You're not much of a fan of the fur trade? No, no, no. Call me a poet, but to me, exploring should be about fame and glory and, and, and golden treasure, not, not beaver. Radisson and Grosselier, oh, they understand adventure. Now imagine, these were the first two men to see lakes and, and rivers and valleys and mountains. The very first man, imagine. <laughs> the first white man. Oh, yes, well, yes, but the natives saw it, but you know, they live there, they, they have to. <laughs> no, you see, these two men are kindred spirits. You know, they've, they've left the British because, of course, the British just believe in money. But the French, les Français, mes amis, <laughs> I'm sure they've given them something a little more than just a few hundred gold coins. Yes, they've offered them 400 gold coins and some land. Oh, magnifique! And, of course, the freedom to explore and trade as they wish. Oh, even more magnifiqueer! <laughs> Sadly, the two men who had conquered a continent were broken by contracts. A polar bear is nothing compared to a lawyer with some fine print. But as author Peter C. Newman makes clear in his incredible series of books about the Hudson Bay Company, these Caesars of the wilderness set the tone and style of how Canadian society would function, a mix of government and free enterprise, of mutual cooperation and survival. Unfortunately, Radisson and Grosset missed out on the profits. They died bitter men. Another proud Canadian tradition. It makes it more personal. Here's a little trick with kumquats. I'm hot. My hot. Hot, hot, hot. More mercury. Tuck in the corners just so. 